Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about GRPC. Now this GRPC has been in talk since quite some time now and uh, in fact in your own companies or wherever you work you might have heard this technology and a lot of people say that it's very fast it's uh, good to use it but why so so i have done some analysis and i will want to share those analysis with you so that you can make the correct choice that when to use grpc and when not to it's not that always grpc would be the good choice and likewise i found that there are many many cases where grpc would be one of the best choices you can have so grpc is built by google you can go to the doc i'll not go through the doc here but overall when you see the architecture of uh, any uh, microservice based application it's uh, quite straightforward that there are multiple service app service 1 app service 2 and likewise there can be even a forest of services and they communicate with each other using some protocol they might be http they might be uh, protocols based on tcp udp based on the use cases so today the thing which we are going to talk about the most which we use is the rest apis so grpc is far better compared to rest in many of the cases and when you communicate between the two services service 1 to service 2 it will be recommended that you communicate through grpc so there is a service 1 you write your code in java c++ c sharp node where, or it can be web browser and likewise the other service which can host an api so the reason for this is that number 1 grpc enforces http2 that is if you see most of the applications or most of the libraries like apache or dotnet c sharp libraries they do not by default have http2 so http2 came into existence in around 2016 so it's still not being used although being talked about a lot yet not being used uh, i would recommend you go and check the library which you are using and then check whether it actually uses http2 or not and most of, and most likely you might not be using it even though http2 would be supported for example apache library has http2 since 2019 but i haven't seen anybody adopting it as such so number one it enforces you to use http2 because you are using a library built by google and that library by default has this http2 notion and the second thing which looked to me very interesting and tempting was this the number of bytes used to send the same data is far 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 less than compared to the data which is being sent using json or xml so let's say if you send some data and that data in a json format takes 70 bytes so the same data will be sent using grpc possibly maybe in 20 bytes or maybe less so don't quote on this number but you can experiment and figure out that there is a lot of encoding which is supported by default so you don't have to encode or you don't have to decode grpc as a library does it in itself and for this they use something called as protocol so yeah other other things are uh, I, i mean there are cases when other things are also there uh, but uh, they are like a cherry on the top of the cake but these two are the ones which tempt people to use grpc the most the other is yes it is supported in multiple languages and uh, it does have a streaming support and this one the, the there is a way to cancel the request as well which is not there in http so let's say you make an http call from the browser and then you wait for the response from the server and after 10 seconds or so you realize that you don't need the request to be completed and maybe the request is very heavy so there is no way in http to send a cancellation request that hey uh, hey server stop computing the data for me i don't need it anymore but such facilities are also there in grpc but yeah as i said these are cherry on the 
top of the cake. But these first two are the main reason people move to gRPC and probably you should also move. So this, when I, when I said about protobuf, so it's an encoding method which gRPC uses. And this is the reason that uh, data which is sent over the wire is much, much, much smaller than what it can be. Yes, of course, you can go ahead and use protobuf library on your own and you don't need to use gRPC. But yes, it is already integrated in the library. So for example, here, if you see a JSON based communication, it's a simple object. You see that we have a name and uh, we have a array of students and this array of students have name, anubhav, age, some random age, and then there is some other student, Arun, and then his age is 10. So if you count the number of characters and one character is equal to one byte. So if you count these characters, they come out to be 67 character, which essentially means 67 bytes, which will be sent over by wire. So this is the typical JSON, which people use here and there, and they send the data. And yes, you of course need to send these keys and values. So generally, uh, the way it looks is that here is a student, the name, age, etc. The same data in the protobuf based method can be sent over 23 characters, just by 23 characters. So see such a big gain you have is uh, possibly around 35% or so. So how does it do it? So if you see this JSON, I'll go into the code as well, but if you see this JSON, you see a lot of repeated data is like you have a name and you have Anubhav. Then age, you have age 10. Then you have another object named Arun. And his age is whatever, 11. And then you have curly brackets, curly bracket, open, close, comma. And this data is very much human readable. Anybody can see this data and understand it. But don't you see that this data, name, name, age, age, this getting repeated? Yes. So what happens is that over the wire, when you send the data, this these keys keep on repeating again and again and again and again. So in an array of objects, this name, this age, this name, this age, and if you have 100 objects, then God save you, you have this name and age getting repeated again and again. And each name consumes four byte, this string, and age, this consumes three byte. So seven byte extra data being sent again and again. So what would be the naive approach to fix it? Uh, some people can say that, hey, I don't want to send this name and age. I'll send just N and A and I'll be safe. That is, I'll, and in my code, I will have something like N means a, name and A means age. And this way they might be able to save some, some bytes. And then somebody would say that, hey, I don't need this name and age. I will have understanding in my code that the sender will always send first name and then age. Na first will be name and then there will be age and then maybe between them there would be some demilitar. And the consumer will consume in it in the same way that when they get the data, they will know that, okay, Anubhav is there, then there is some delimiter, then age is there, then some delimiter. So this is a typical problem you might have done in your uh, coding uh, and uh, DSA questions that how do you encode and decode with different approaches. So yes, you can of course go ahead and do such things that um, you you send the data from the from the client or server or peer to peer and you encode the data in a way which you understand and then the server will decode that data which the uh, which would already be communicated between the client and server and they will communicate. So in this way, they will know that, okay, this data is there. Client sending the data in a certain format, Anubhav, delimiter, age, delimiter, Arun, delimiter, age, and the, uh, the other server will decode it. 
don't you think this is encoding and decoding which you are doing on your own in your application layer which has already been solved by google and that is the protobuf library which is there so protobuf library exactly does the same you create a schema that hey this is a schema and that schema is done using a protobuf file and then you create a schema and then share between the two applications so basically what you do is that uh, you create an application then you create a schema and before communicating between each other you share the schema beforehand that and that schema is called dot proto file so you share the dot proto file between both the machines when when you deploy it when you write your code so now your client as well as server they know about this proto file and once they know about this proto file and you use this library to encode so this library intelligently does all those compressions i'll come to this the demo of this in the next video but just take it as a face value that this is just a 23 character and this library is doing all the work for you to compress this 67 bytes to 23 bytes and the compression and um, the encoding and decoding is being done by both the client and the server and they communicate using some fix here so the repeated data is somehow avoided and yes the data is communicated uh, in a lesser bytes so using the lesser bytes you can send the data in the coming videos i'll have a explanation and the demo of how this happens because once you have a working code you will have more confidence on how this happens so the next video will be around a, a demo of protobuf using a java code so i'll have a java code a maven project which commonly everybody can go through and i'll share it on the github as well so when you run that code you will have more confidence that hey this is the same data which is taking lesser bytes and the the, the same data is taking more bytes in uh, uh, json format compared to the protobuf format the serialized format and then we'll move on to grpc so when we move on to grpc you will have idea that okay uh, under the hood it is using protobuf because of which the data is small and the second is the it it will use http2 will also wireshark can see that yes it is actually http2 and there are other features as well we'll explore in the coming videos so if you like the content please comment and let me know that what all things you found interesting and is there anything which i can add in my coming videos and that will be helpful uh, for you as well thanks